like you need the pain pill. Hi, I'm Dean Bushmiller with Expanding Security. The pain pill is every Tuesday for three minutes. We want to find one thing that can make us more secure, make us better at our job, and make our job better for us. This week, you can get your free class by going to bit.ly pain pill 40 on Thursday at 6 p.m. Central Time. We're going to talk about intellectual property law and e-discovery that night and now. Now remember, intellectual property law today is more of a business strategy and less about protecting the creative efforts. It's not just a date stamp on your patent as to when you invented it and how you can prove it. It's also going to relate to the digital records exposed in civil litigation. It is possible that you could be going humming along in your intellectual property inventiveness of your own and through e-discovery, that intellectual property that has yet to be patented could be exposed in a court of law. So remember, it's not just the exposure of this in a very high level way. This could be a forensic level investigation of what you are doing in your organization. Okay, so which records in e-discovery are they looking at? Well, in the United States as of 2006, the goal in e-discovery is to recover evidence that digital evidence, and that means all email and instant messaging that is related to the case. It must be produced for the courts in a timely manner, and this is going to put a huge burden on your archival process and your retention policy. Now remember, it's not just the records or the files, but it's the records and the files and that metadata that is so important to the court. So we need to when, know when that file was added, created, deleted, modified, and all of that stuff for the court. So what happens? Well, what you need to do is take a snapshot of all the active data on the systems that deals with this particular issue before the courts. You're going to need a good tagging system. It's probably classification and sensitivity labeling in your organization. It may be something more. It could be as simple as an abstract of each and every document that's required when you're actually creating the documents, and that places a burden on your people who are actually creating the new information. It could be a complex document indexing system that's done by your data custodians. Now, any data about the case is going to need to be prepared by the attorney. The attorney may direct you to not proceed with your current activity of inventiveness. What you really need is a good data custodian, and their job has to be done way before the fact, way back when you first start all of this activity. So how does this interact with the intellectual property? Well, in two different ways. One is that invention could be exposed. But let's just talk about the invention for a second. Today's inventions are usually based upon some sort of known concept in a new way. It's very rare that we have a greenfield invention. You have to ask yourself, who owns the prior art, not only in your local country, but globally? You're going to need a good search expert to do the investigation to find out who owns the prior art in all those different languages. Now, it could be that the opposing counsel buys the rights to prior art, and that gives them grounds to sue you. It's happened many times in technology. The problem is, is that you lose, even if you were the first person to invent this, and that's a big problem because you've invested a lot of time and effort into this, or your company has. So even if you're right, and if you cannot prove it fast and efficiently in a court of law, you're going to lose. I recommend policy fixes of reconciling the data retention policy with the intellectual property business need. If you have a high degree of intellectual property creation, maybe you need to change your data retention policy. You also might want to build an e-discovery policy with support from your legal organization. Another action item on the technical side is to identify indexing, tagging, or the labeling systems and maybe think about compiling a data dictionary of hazardous terms surrounding e-discovery and intellectual property for your organization so that you can be ready. You can get more pain pills by going to our YouTube channel or signing up at expandingsecurity.com pain pill. This week, come to our live class on Thursday at 6 p.m. by going to the bit.ly pain pill 40 link before class. Type your name, turn up your speakers, and have a great time five minutes before class. And hopefully, you don't need a pain pill until next week. And this is the last pain pill of this year. Thanks, and see you next year.